population of Coburg, Oregon tips in at just over 1,000 people. It's a quiet, tight-knit community known as a mecca for history and antiques. If it's old, it's Coburg. We met Mayor Judy Volta at the city park to find out a little more about how this small town got its start. First, it didn't start out as Coburg. The community was actually called Willamette Forks. That is until one day in 1865 when a blacksmith by the name of Charles Payne was shoeing a racing stallion from Coburg, Germany. It was a fine specimen and he shod the horse and he put the, the old shoes up in the wall and he said, a wonderful horse, a wonderful town, I shall dub this town Coburg. Today, Coburg is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and many of the original buildings still stand, like the Coburg Inn, which is the Van Dyne House. Isaac Van Dyne and his 10 kids live there. They say that, that Alice, one of the daughters, still lives upstairs somewhere that people see lights go off and on. The original bell from the first one-roomed schoolhouse sits in front of the current day elementary school. A saw from the Booth Kelly Mill hangs on the wall in City Hall. But at one time it was really a bustling place. We had a woolen factory, a glass factory, a skunk farming factory, two mills. And this tattered book holds a lot of insight into how the city came to govern itself. This is a book of the original ordinances handwritten uh, in the city of Coburg. Ordinances like the one that makes it illegal to let your dog run wild in the city limits, adopted by Coburg leaders back in 1916. Today it takes just minutes to drive from Coburg to Eugene here on Coburg Road, but back then it took three and a half hours by horse and buggy, so folks needed another form of transportation. We had four trains that came through our town every day, and uh, by a flip of a, of a coin, we got the narrow gauge railway, and Eugene got the regular, the standard gauge. That was in 1878. The rail line stretched north to Brownsville, and for the first time, farmers could ship their products to Portland and buy things that were not available locally. By all accounts, Coburg was on track to become a booming city on the river. And then um, because of a, just a variety of circumstances around the turn of the century, 1910, 1912, uh, some, the businesses folded up, the water was rerouted because of the Leeburg Dam, and the town went into this sleep. Although the city has had some planned growth, it has remained small, and folks here like it that way. There are six Coburgs in the world, but we think we're the best.